This is the, the, the purple that you're putting on at the moment. Yeah. I think it's working very well because I'm reading it as brown. That's right. Okay, good. I just want to, I want to make sure you guys are seeing the, the yeah. point of it, right? So it's pure purple, but you paint it over yellow, it goes brown. Does that look like shadows? Yeah. Sort of, eh? It's not bad. Uh, do you think it's the right value? Yeah. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Because the yellow takes over. All the brush strokes are going in the same direction, and that's to remove brush stroke. You can see here the background. I'm not sure of the distance you're at, but it's like a hatching motion, like this, yeah. and mm -hmm. then like that, and I create a pattern. I don't want that with this, because this is flat. I want this to be flat as well, because it's the same material. This is a different material. Sky. If you're going to make a change, Make a real change. Don't don't be sort of timid and see. I was too timid with the with the liquid. It was virtually the same. You could could hardly tell a difference. But now, now I've got contrast. Now I can make decisions. Is it too thin? Is it too thick? I'm trying to achieve a goal, which is creating shadows by layering transparent color. So I think that the the leaves are a good subject because you think of the leaves as a glaze, right? They're transparent. If you look up close where the yellow has gone over top of the blue, it goes a tiny bit green. Now you can embellish that and vary it or have the whole thing a halo of, of green. That's up to you. You can see it there. At a distance, you can't. It glows. But up close, you go, oh, that's green. But from a distance, because of the color theory, it glows, which is kind of interesting.